Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 197 of Manage the Wild. I'm your host, Nick Madsen. Today, we're going to talk about predator control. Uh, what's the What's the thought process behind it? What are the controversies? How's it going? And there's a bunch going on. So some of the reasons why wildlife agencies, as well as hunters, want to have predator control is due to game population management. The main reason for predator control is to manage uh, those populations of game species, um, big game species. We're talking about the deer, elk, uh, moose, pronghorn, bighorn sheep. So when you have predators similar to wolves, coyotes, mountain lions, they can impact populations. And so hunters uh, are a big advocate as well as ranchers. They're a big advocate for reducing and going through predator control. Now they've been doing predator control for a couple hundred years now. And in some cases we got really good at it uh, with wolves. But in other cases with coyotes, not necessarily as good. There are situations out there where they are poisoning sheep and putting those dead carcasses out and then hoping the coyotes are going to eat them. They also have cyanide bombs where they take these little bombs that uh, are attached to a string. When the coyotes pull on the string thinking it's some type of food, they will pull it and then the cyanide goes off in the face. So I mentioned one of them, another reason for predator control is due to livestock. Uh, I think that's where the animosity towards predators really actually started. If you look at Native Americans and early Europeans, uh, they were, at least those who came out west really quickly, they were tolerant, very tolerant, if not uh, spiritual towards these um, predators, uh, as far as wolves and bears and coyotes, they held them in high regard. And then once agriculture started to spread across and the animals started to target, uh, the cattle that were fenced in, that couldn't get away or the sheep that may not necessarily, uh, be as good at getting away as some of the wildlife. And so there became a real animosity to, between, the predators, the wildlife, and that of agriculture. Uh, it's not necessarily just predators that agriculture, uh, those that industry can get upset. They can find themselves at odds with deer, elk, jackrabbits, voles, and there's a whole lot of other things. When it makes it difficult to grow uh, crops and whatnot, then there's going to be ways that they are looking to reduce the competition. And then another one, uh, another reason behind predator control is that of the endangered species. Uh, Predators may be targeting some of the animals that are very sensitive, and so they're going to go look to reduce those predator populations to help uh, those situations out. Some of the predators that we may not think of are somewhat invasive. Uh, can be cats on islands when they're going out and targeting... um, birds and whatnot that are, have been bound to the island and can't really migrate off. Cats can come in and wipe out a whole population pretty quick. But we've just named all the reasons why people want predator control, but there are some challenges behind that. There are, uh, I guess, what you would call ethical concerns. There's a lot of people who oppose predator control, want them to, allowed to be allowed to move around freely uh, as they were before Europeans got here and do their own thing. Um, there's this belief, and I'm, I'm not too far from this belief, that they have a, as much right to be here as we do. Yes, we are humans, and we are a little more with it, I guess, and uh, oftentimes we find ourselves in a management, management situation. But I think if uh, there is a situation where we don't need to manage them, that they can live freely, then I think we should allow wildlife to do so. There are some ecosystem uh, concerns. Um, by removing predators from the food chain, it, it can throw the whole thing out of balance. If you remove some of those top predators, brown bears, sharks, and that, uh, what are the effects that are going to go down the road that we're not able to see when we disrupt those food chains? You know, the one thing that is more interesting to me is the more we go along, 
those larger animals, those larger mammals, uh, you're seeing less and less in them, and things are getting smaller and smaller. It's easier for us to really go after and target the bigger things until there's no more. Think of the ocean. There's not too many big mammals or big fish out there. Uh, tuna they're talking about. By the year 2050, uh, all the large tuna or even sooner than that, could be wiped off the earth. And we'll just have a bunch of smaller tuna. Look at the whales and the challenges they face. But then you think uh, about on land, uh, as far as elephants or rhinoceroses or moose, deer, elk, caribou, all those large mammals uh, we're pretty good at targeting. And so when you remove those animals off the food chain you really create some situations that may be detrimental well uh, there may be a predator a large predator that we removed that was holding something else in check that we just weren't aware of another uh, good debate is science versus public opinion the science of opinion versus the public predator control programs um the cha I guess the challenge is that you're trying to balance that. Uh, let's say that you have a predator holding a mule deer population down, uh, cougars, and they're really... Now, this is never... I've never come across a situation where this is actually the number one thing. But it's, a, it's an easy one. But let's say cougars are having them packed on mule deer, and mule deer are hurting, uh, whether it's loss of habitat, bad weather or just any other challenge disease. And you can identify predators as one of those main issues, then there is this push to reduce them as much as possible. And so the science, uh, there's a balancing act. You can, the science says you should remove predators. The opinion says you shouldn't. And so you just have to balance that. And it's, it can be very challenging. There are some alternatives uh, to lethal control, um, some non-lethal methods. Uh, a lot of those would include, like if you're concerned about your agricultural uh, product, whether it's cattle or fields, whatnot, um, there are some guardian animals, dogs, llamas, donkeys, that can go out and uh, protect livestock as well as your crops. There are situations where they are flying drones now to try and help push animals off at nighttime where people aren't able to get as close. Uh, another alternative to lethal control is education and just accepting that there needs to be some coexistence. There's a situation coming up here in Utah that they're going to face pretty quick that will be really interesting. That area is in Park City. They are pushing more and more into that, what I would call, perfect wild habitat for elk. And they are getting more and more conflicts between humans and wildlife, whether it's uh, mule deer, elk, or moose. There are, there's quite a few conflicts that are happening. One of the things that wildlife managers are eventually going to have to do is because you can only dart and move so many moose before you just have to say, guess what, you've moved into their area and you're now going to have to learn to coexist with them. Uh, and there's going to be a whole lot of education going on. A lot of these people have these little yappy dogs that they let these dogs run up to the wildlife just like you see in Yellowstone, people are just unaware of how to work with wildlife, and so there needs to be a lot of a lot of education that goes on. A lot of the animals that we have dealt with aggressively in the past are now coming back, and we're we're now having conversations that are happening on both sides of the table. Oftentimes, people feel like their voice is not being heard, and there's some subjects out there that are that are being brought back to the table that people maybe a hundred years ago we're not so open to bringing back of wolves has been around for 30 years now but it's still causing problems and there's still fights that are going on whether you're in wyoming montana idaho you know you're going to have some issues coming up here with colorado and all the things they're trying to do as well as uh, areas of california oregon washington even utah utah said that uh, 
below uh, I-80, we're not allowing any wolves to exist. And I think that eventually that's going to get challenged. The other one that's uh, really interesting right now is coyotes. Um, there's been a constant fight with coyotes for the last 200 years, trying to figure out how to wipe them out. And it's like the more we push to wipe them out, the, the better they are spreading into new areas, even adapting very well into urban areas. And then the large carnivores, those uh, brown bears and black bears, as more and more states are opening up to the possibility of these animals moving in, then you're going to have some uh, some conflict there. You're going to have to look at the conflict between humans and those brown bears. Uh, there's some talk in putting some brown bears or uh, grizzly bears into the Sierra Nevadas, as well as there's a push uh, by a couple of groups to bring them back into Colorado. And so there's going to be some safety concerns. And these are all the predator control questions th that need to be brought up. And so it just takes uh, wildlife management with a, a clear direction of where they need to go. Oftentimes there isn't a clear direction. If it's under done under public opinion, it'll swing widely from one month to another, especially with these wildlife boards being so heavily influenced with with outside groups, whether, you know, there's money involved or whatnot, but there's a big push for these wildlife boards to swing one way or another. So predator control is always going to be one of those controversial ones, and we're going to talk more and more about it as we, as these states push more and more to bring back grizzly bears, bring back wolves, let the population grow, or even in some cases reduce the population. So you're going to continue to see a lot more fights going on. All right, you guys, have a great day. Stay wild.